Dr. Tushar Patel here, medical oncologist from Sayadri Hospital, Pune. This talk is about cervical cancer awareness. So cervical cancer is one of the commonest cancers in poor socioeconomic background strata patients. It is also not uncommon in affluent societies. Cervical cancer takes almost 15 to 20 years to develop from a non-cancerous uh, tissue. Usually, cervix undergoes various changes. One of these changes is inflammation that is called cervicitis. So this inflammation then becomes a chronic inflammation. It's called chronic cervicitis. And it may happen because of multiple factors. One of the common factors which causes cervical cancer and cervicitis prior to cancer is human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus has various strains and few of these strains are known to cause cancers. They infect the cervix, they cause acute cervicitis, then they cause chronic cervicitis and this chronic inflammation over a period of years, 15 to 20 years, then develops into precancerous lesions and ultimately into cancer. So this 15 to 20 years is an adequate window for us to detect the tube, what we say as a disease prior to development of cancer. It's called precancerous lesions. And that is where is the importance of doing cervical cancer screening. Friends, cervical cancer commonest age group in India today is around 50-55 years. It's 10 years earlier to what is seen in the Western world population. Poor hygiene, poor sexual hygiene, multiple partners, infestations with human papilloma virus are commonest causes of development of cervical cancer. The diagnosis of cervical cancer usually is made by a punch biopsy from the cervix, which is read on the microscope. Once the diagnosis of cervical cancer is done, usually an imaging is done to know the stage. The commonest imaging today which is followed is either an MRI or a CT scan or a PET scan. This gives us an adequate information about the spread of this cancer into the cervix and into the adjacent organs. Unfortunately, in cervical cancers, any cancer which is above stage 2 is usually inoperable and it has no advantage. So these cancers are treated with chemo radiation. For all very very early stage cancers, surgery is the norm and from stage 2b onwards, chemo radiation is the norm. So treatment of cancer of cervix is usually surgery for very very early stage diseases and then usually it's a chemo radiation when the radiation and the chemotherapy are given in uh, uh, in a concurrent format to get rid of the tumor. Once this cancer spreads to other organs, maybe lymph nodes, maybe liver, lungs or bones, it becomes metastatic. And a metastatic cervical cancer has a very very poor outcome. Today, with the advances in the treatment modality of chemotherapy, targeted therapy and in few cases immunotherapy, the survival has been prolonged for these uh, dismal outcome cervical cancers also but yes the basis baseline remains that once a spread to organs uh, to other organs occurs it is incurable and some or the other form of treatment would continue for a very very prolonged period i would like to emphasize that prevention is the key to go ahead so prevention can happen in two formats first is cervical cancer screening which can happen starting at the age of 21 doing the cervical cancer screening by pap smear or liquid based cytology and then once all these are negative at the age of 30 and then it can be made to every two to three years. So this pap screening is available at various centers, gynecological centers, various hospitals and all females above 21 years of age should take advantage of pap smear screening which can detect the precancerous lesions also. Second most important aspect of cervical cancer prevention is vaccine. We today know that human papilloma virus few strains can cause cervical cancers. They are responsible for almost 50 to 60 percent of cervical cancers which are seen in India. And these strains can be tackled with HPV vaccine. This vaccine is available across the country at various centers. All females, eligible females, school going children. Uh, 9 to 26 years of age are the ones who are eligible for this because if they do not have a, a HPV infection, the vaccine prevention is more, what we see as effectivity is more than 90%. Once they contract HPV, the vaccine efficacy goes down by more than 50%. So I would recommend uh, strongly this human papillomavirus vaccine to all eligible candidates for the prevention 
of recurrent and chronic cervicitis which leads to the cancer in the long run friends these two methodologies of pap smear and and the vaccination for hpv will help us a long way in tackling this menace of cervical cancer which has very very poor outcomes especially when detected in the later stages if there are any queries related to cervical cancer screening and vaccine you can contact on the below mentioned numbers and we will try to sort out your queries thank you